Welcome back. I remember it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday. Thank you very much, Barrio, on that interview pertaining pension plan. So we have to be on the lookout on the days where we, when we retire. So at Michelle Shira is here. You can find me across all my social media platform. Remember, you can also equally follow us across the social media platform. That is at Y254 channel. We have a question on our Facebook page and we are asking, do you think the ad actually does pay. Do you think actually the ad does pay? And uh, we're going to check into that, your comments coming in and watch. what are your thoughts pertaining the ad business. So in studio today, we have our He's a very beautiful lady. And not just looking at the challenges women but also the achievements. So our lady in the house, she's going to talk about the challenges and the achievements she has actually gotten to receive during the entrepre entrepreneurship journey. And uh, with no further ado, welcome to Y254 channel. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank All you right. for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. So let us use this opportunity and introduce yourself. My name is Lillian Muli from Hidden Tears, Kenya and from Makweni County. Currently working at Africa Youth Leadership Forum. Oh, why? Right. Yes. So before uh, before we got here, yes, <laughs> <laughs> we had a conversation, and you wear so many hats. And uh, I would like to, I like our viewers to find out as a young person, uh, and you allow me to say your age. You're just 24 years of age, and uh, you started your entrepreneurship journey from way back. Yes. I would like to find out what was your first venture. Wow, that's very interesting <laughs> because I find it so funny sometimes when I'm telling people about it. But my first hustle, ilikuwa, I used to kubeba easy matofali. So, I used to matofali na bebe a neighbor matofali mm -hmm. na mpelekea kwake. Okay. So, basically, to look at it, we have to look at it, we have to look at it, we So, we were being paid for one, one matofali ni mm -hmm. 50 cents. But then I think to look at 50 cents. Yeah, 50 cents. So you carry two, you get one shilling. I carried 200 bricks to get 100 bob. And that was my first attempt mm -hmm. into business. Oh, and wow. what I did with this 100 bob, nilibai buy ile kiyoyata. Kama siju muna kumuka zile tazil kwa zine kwa the nitraje. Is it the Utambi? Yeah, the Utambi thing. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have looked for the English word, we are settling for Utambi. Yes. <laughs> so, ni katafta, ni kata, ni kanuwe yokiyo, ilikuwa 50 bob for the small one. And then the 50 mm -hmm. bob yenye libaki, mm -hmm. ni kanunua chick, a chick, oh, right. kaku okay. kadogo, mm -hmm. ni keka home. So, after a period of time, ilianza ku, kupata kutaga mayai, mm -hmm. and then I used to sell those eggs. From that, I could buy things that I want for myself. Not that because my parents could not buy books for me, mm -hmm. but I felt like maybe I need something extra, I could buy that. I need some money when you're going out, at mm -hmm. least to know a biscuit and all that, in addition to the money that you may put on So, I also needed money, so I was like, okay, this also could work. So that was my first attempt in business, which lasted for only one day. <laughs> okay. Well. That one day that I carried bricks, I never carried bricks again. What it did you move to now? Half. All right. Yes. Now what did you move to from the bricks? To so from the bricks and, and, and the chicken, the chicken, of course, I ended, ended up eating that chicken. So <laughs> that was the end of business. <laughs> So the next <laughs> business that I attempted to uh -huh. do was in high school, mm -hmm. but this was uh, because we, we never really used to have a lot of money in high school. Mm -hmm. I was in Mutale Girls Kitui, so I used to write letters, love letters. Okay. I'm very good when it comes to poems and poetry. So I used to write letters for ladies to send to their boyfriends and all that, and they would pay me or give me a slice of bread. Oh, why? Right. Yes. So most of them would prefer, because bread was something when mm -hmm. we were in school, they would mm -hmm. prefer to give me money. So at the end of the term, I have some cash from writing letters. So you guys, when you're breaking to ho going home, uh, you're very much sorted when it comes to finances. I'm sorted. I'm telling you, I'm going to get the best things that I want for myself mm -hmm. and also like get a gift for my parents because every holiday I used to go home with a gift for my parents. 
so from there I went to university and now university now marked the serious bit of me starting business mm -hmm. so I was doing I was selling accessories to students mm -hmm. when I got to Lekipa University but the first uh, I think through when I got to Lekipa University the first thing that I I did was to get into a competition for Miss Miss Lekipia, mm -hmm. which I won, okay. and from that reputation, I was like, "Now what can I do?" When with was this? this? The Miss Lekipia. This was uh, two thousand and fifteen. All right. Do you feel like when you're starting off, because you've ventured into a couple of businesses, and now you went to accessory uh, at the university? Yes. Do you feel like uh, the previous ventures build your confidence to actually feel like I can actually own a business of my own? Uh, I think, well, I wasn't thinking that way back then. Okay. Back then, I was like, I need money to do some of these things that I would like to do as a teenager. Mm. I, I kuna tu, tu letu vitu, mm. natukanga tu kufanya, but you can't ask money for that. Mm -hmm. So, I, I think I had the wrong reasons to start those businesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when I got to, like, keep a university and uh, starting mm -hmm. a business where I'm selling accessories, I, then I was sober. Okay. Then that's when I was like, yes, I can do this. The confidence bit was now checked. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, but if I have to do this, I have to do it in a manner where I am earning. I can pay, I can pay some of these bills and also save. All right. Yeah. Now we have won Miss Lakeeper. Yes. 20, 2015. 2015. I am given some money All right. from that competition. Mm -hmm. So half of that money. How much was it? It was actually four thousand. All right. And I know it sounds small, yeah. but trust me, I got that yeah. bahasha, and I'm like, mm, Jesus. So two thousand of that uh, of that amount, mm -hmm. I took two thousand, came to Nairobi, and went to River Road, bought my first bunch of accessories. Eh, money minded. <laughs> <laughs> then went back to Lakeia. Uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the good thing is, in like in Yahururu, we don't have a big shop where okay. you could get accessories, like good accessories. So when I used to come to Nairobi, after before you fike Nyahururu, mm -hmm. guys were already like, wana order. Do you have this? Keep one for me. Do you have this? Keep one. So after every two weeks, I used to come back to Nairobi to pick stock. Until mm -hmm. to a point, I started having, you know, huge uh orders like so many orders mm -hmm. to to give and i decided well i could get a huge uh, a bunch of accessories mm -hmm. where at least naka for one month to save up on on the transport at this point bit. are you still in school i'm still in school mm -hmm. studying uh, studying english and communication oh right. and i am still a student leader in the aspect of being the miss Mm -hmm. And I which was actually financed by your uh, business, small business ventures. Exactly, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> exactly. And at the same time, mm -hmm. I'm a class rep, oh, wow. so I can't miss classes, and I have to give reports to lecturers, all the lecturers, and I have to run initiatives back in school. Mm -hmm. It could sound tricky, but this is the thing: when I got to university, I really was sober to make my life different. Mm -hmm. So I. Every decision that I made was very intentional. Okay. So I managed my time so well that I couldn't really part of God when it came to the important things that I was doing. Okay, let's look at uh, now from uh, the accessory business, the yeah. Miss Laikipia. Yeah. Now you're starting an, a non-profit uh, yes. uh, uh, venture, an organization. Okay. What does this non-profit uh, deal with before you actually even get to your farming business? Okay, so from selling accessories, mm -hmm. it funded my campaign mm -hmm. uh, just to close the gap to where the NGO came from. Funded my campaign to become a student leader in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Ah, in not in, in, <laughs> in, in like Kipia University. University. Oh God, yes. I'm the next Miss President. So I see you. It's watch possible. It. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. So it funded my student leadership, mm -hmm. and then from there, now that's when Hidden Tears Kenya was born. Mm -hmm. The vision of Hidden Tears Kenya, because we realized people really wanted, needed a safe space where they could have conversations and feel safe and mm -hmm. feel like they're not judged, you know? And 
getting to hidden tears kenya sounded really huge in my mind because i was like how are we going to make this work but at the end of the day it's all about discipline how do you discipline yourself and the sacrifices you're ready to make so now in hidden tears kenya we realized as much as we're having conversations we need to be able to mentor young people mm -hmm. so now we focused we have three pillars so the first pillar is education and mentorship mm -hmm. and then we also learned mm -hmm. for me to be able to run a business mm -hmm. and to actually make it successful i need to have an innovative mind and I need to be a leader oh, why? you know I, at, at the same time okay before we get to the uh, you being a leader and uh, get into mentorship uh, your program which is the nonprofit program which we're going to talk about yeah. I'd like to find out at the point where you are a student leader did you feel the need to give back and that's when the organization started off yeah, the, there was the need to give back and that's when the, now the safe spaces I was talking about were born. Because as much as we were in school and we looked comfortable, the people were not comfortable because right. of different issues. Maybe social issues, maybe mental issues, maybe financial constraints and all that. So we felt the need to be able to live as a community yeah. with one voice and at least hold each other's hands. Because it was so sad to see at the end of four years, kuna mtu anachwa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because maybe I have a school fee ama maybe I have gone to ama maybe something I'm quite depressed and for one year yeah, they dropped issues. out and all that so we were like no this can't keep happening we need to start something and that was the birth how did you come up with Kenya? getting getting a team it's tricky but again you know you people will follow you if you have a sober vision Mm -hmm. There's a, a vision that is just and they're like, uh huh, and then what next? There's no clarity. There's no clarity oh, in right. it. But there's a vision that somebody somebody could share with you, and you're like, I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. And at the I end of the day, of yes. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, it's how does it connect when it comes to that vision between you and another person? Mm -hmm. Do you have a value that you share or a common interest? Mm -hmm. So having so many students talking about all this all these things happening we had a common interest mm -hmm. and we shared one value all together which was humanity right. we wanted to do good for people okay because to us the the first the first team that i got of three people mm -hmm. and uh, actually four because of the person who was doing the coverage and then the team they were really really so much into how can we make each other valuable in this community and how can we add value in our institution by making each other empowered and more relevant to what they want to be or the best version of who they want to be okay yes so here it is you found a team and we there was clarity yes. and you are ready to work and uh, give back to the society yes. and address social issues so yes. what was the name how what is the name of this uh, non-profit organization and uh, what are some of the uh, issues that you guys have addressed? So uh, the name is Hidden Tears Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, some people <laughs> often ask me why Hidden why Tears. Hi why Hidden? Yes, why mm -hmm. Hidden? Because you'll find in the different spaces that we have in the society, there are those things that we kind of just lay them in the gray area and not give a lot of focus to them. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they give us pain. Okay. in one way or the other you get losses in businesses mm -hmm. you lose friends in when it comes to social life mm -hmm. maybe you get to depression and some health issues because you ignored some of these things in life oh, right. so this pain is going to give you a little bit of tears whether we see it or not you have some tears in your in your life in every life story we have a tear mm -hmm. so that's where the name came from and at the, uh, the beginning of th those conversation we tackled things like rape the uh, people of faced rape friendship mm -hmm. that ended ended up having rape cases in between like you know trusting a friend and at the end of the day they end up being the person who's going to rape you you know and we tackled uh, drug abuse mm -hmm. issues we also tackled parental re rejection i mean parenting rejection where parents were so 
reluctant to just be concerned about their kids and we've talked about depressions on, on our platforms and we've talked about suicide actually yesterday we had, we had an article it's on our Facebook account about suicide as much as we are talking about the person who is attempting to commit suicide mm -hmm. from one uh, what happens to the person who is actually the support system of this person you are my family member and you're mm -hmm. trying to commit suicide mm -hmm. what does that make me feel mm -hmm. and how does that affect me that is an article that was written by one of our members she's called valerie and it's a very good article because it opens our mind to the uh, to a point where you get to ask some of these questions that they're never asked mm -hmm. we are always focusing on the person committing suicide which is good, but what happens to the family members or the friends associated to this person? Because in most cases, when someone commits suicide, there's a possibility for either a friend or a family member to end up committing suicide. So basically suicide you're looking too. at the hidden issues that yes. influence productivity of a person. Exactly. Okay. So but now, just to make it as a uh, comprehensive enough mm -hmm. we have we've had three pillars in our organization and one is education and mentorship and then we have leadership and innovation and then we have super kids connect mm -hmm. where in mentorship we tackle young people and try to work with them give them information network them and our program called machine and youth program and when it comes to leadership and innovation it's business now mm -hmm. as much as you're a young person and you're mentored you need mm -hmm. to pay your bills you need, you, you need to live you know yes so guys make sure you follow us across all social media platform that is at y254 channel as we continue with this conversation i'd like to find out how can people uh, uh reach out to this do you guys have a website or social accounts where we can actually have a visual of these uh stories that are actually being told yeah we have a social account uh, in uh, facebook it's hidden tears kenya mm -hmm. in twitter is at tears kenya mm -hmm. we have uh, instagram hidden mm -hmm. underscore tears underscore kenya oh, wow. and then we have uh youtube hidden mm -hmm. tears kenya mm -hmm. basically just go to any platform and type hidden tears kenya something oh, wow. will pop up so girl yeah. you hustler I am <laughs> go, go get some money. I need so, money. Uh, let's look at you getting into the farming business. Yes. Uh, yes. So earlier on, you went to a, a, a chicken uh, farming, but didn't go well. It's now you the, ch the, <laughs> the small animal. <laughs> exactly. So now we into the farming business. Yes. So what exactly <coughs> are you involved into when he talks about the the farming business? What exactly do you do? So I keep sheep. Mm -hmm. So I sell them. A what? Each year. Okay. So not How many all of them. Do you have? I at the moment have twelve. Twelve. Because okay. last December mm -hmm. I did sell some of them. How m how many did you sell last or Six. on a festive season? Six. Six of them. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. And it, it, it's it's some reasonable money because mm -hmm. each you'll sell at at least forty five. How did you start on the on the ship business? This is how I started. How much was your capital? Five thousand. Okay. When I was in first year, in our village, we had a school that had been started mm -hmm. and they needed a teacher. So oh. when I went for long holiday, I was employed there. Hey, when do you I have a social life? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I I'm, looking, I'm listening to you and every single break, you're just getting into <laughs> a different venture. I, I have. After I have a specific a period of time, <laughs> another venture. So you have a social life. Yes, I okay, do Okay, now you, you're on a break and uh, there's an opportunity teaching. for teaching. Yes. I loved it. So they used to pay me 5000 per month. Okay. And of course, these were two months. Mm -hmm. So the first month, I was like... This is my first official mm -hmm. salary, apart from Sasa Zile Zingino na Jitafteo Koinje. So with the first 5,000 that I got, okay. I bought two ships. All right, all right. And from that, a male and a female. Mm -hmm. And from that, for four years, I didn't sell them. Okay. So they got up to 16. Oh, I be, hold no, it 18. there. 18, yes. Hold the spot there. So let take us back to Hidden Tears. Yes. And let's find out uh, uh, the couple of projects that you have, you guys have uh, have done and the impact that has that has had in the society. So yeah. this is hidden and Scotia's in Instagram. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this I see certificate of registration. Uh, recognition. Those for recognition. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. These are <laughs> on 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 Friday. All right. We were recognized at the Zuri Awards. 
Ah, nice. Yeah, we were we were nominated mm -hmm. and we were recognized at the Zuri Awards, mm -hmm. which for us was I had not seen that. that that's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. Which for us was a big win because mm -hmm. it gave us a voice in in aspect to what we are doing and mm -hmm. exactly what we've been championing for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is where it's coming from. It's Zuri Awards, a recognition. What was the feeling so, when you guys got nominated and walked away with that award? I mean, getting this certificate mm -hmm. for us as a mm -hmm. team, mm -hmm. we were like, yes, now we can see that it's actually making sense to people, carrying the value that we hold most mm -hmm. dear to our hearts, mm -hmm. to understand the importance of every human in our communities mm -hmm. for us it was a big win and we were like for, for a moment mm -hmm. through the challenges of course everything has challenges the mm -hmm. challenges we're facing mm -hmm. we were like you know what we can do this we can still go on and achieve more so it was one a kick mm -hmm. to do more and more mm -hmm. and two that gave us a sense of connection with mm -hmm. people that they understand what you're doing Oh, well, I see yes. projects where you're working with the young, the young, young people, people yes. the young kids, yes. uh, still under hidden This tears. is Makweni, oh, well. yes. So this is Makweni and we're having a summit with young, young mm -hmm. uh, women mm -hmm. because in 2017 we had 11 cases in a village okay. where young ladies were pregnant while doing their SC. Mm -hmm. But last year we had zero. From mm -hmm. these sessions we've been able to have constant conversation with young people from Makweni. Okay. And having this conversation, they've made them more uh, relevant when it comes to decision making and the choices that they make in their lives. Yeah. All right. So, guys, make sure you follow uh, hidden underscore tears underscore Kenya. That's on their, in, in, on their Instagram page. Yeah. And uh, Lil and Muli, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Giving back to the society, Thank you. Uh, having your own business venture. Do you look forward to ever getting employed? I have a career. <laughs> <laughs> I am looking forward to make it uh, mm -hmm. more comprehensive oh, right. by getting more opportunities mm -hmm. before I completely walk out of employment. Mm -hmm. So yes, I have a career that I want to grow. All right. Yeah. Just as we wind up, I would like to, uh, earlier on we were having a conversation uh, prior to our uh, entrepreneurship Tuesday. Uh, yes. Fans uh, get to see us. So there was this particular. Uh, information that you gave me about uh, your love for fashion yeah. and getting back to the fashion industry. So is that another business venture that we should look out for that Lillian Muli will be getting into very soon? Yeah, yeah. Fashion industry. Mm -hmm. I'm coming back. I'm okay. coming back. For a while, uh, we started the book back when I was in school, mm -hmm. but it couldn't survive because of some of the challenges that we're facing. So we hold it a little bit, but this year we are coming back strong. Oh. Yeah, we're coming back. So watch out, Libuke is coming back. <laughs> Libuke is coming back. I'm so excited because our first uh -huh. design uh -huh. is actually out uh -huh. this month. Nice. Yeah, so we are keeping it calm mm -hmm. until we're ready and then we'll be out for business. Uh, yes. Give this opportunity to uh, give all your social handles so that people can keep tabs on all the projects that are coming up and other new ventures because Lily Moon yeah. is full of new <laughs> ventures every single time. Yeah. So probably use uh, or come in number four and you just okay. give us uh, your social accounts and how people can reach out to you. Okay, so in Facebook is Lillian Muli. If you want to have a conversation on a personal space, when you want to have a conversation when it comes to Hidden Tears Kenya, it's Hidden Tears Kenya in all platforms. Uh, Twitter, it's at Claudaline, but my name is Lillian Muli, so you can also find me there. One, one thing I really want to tell young people when it comes to entrepreneurship, it's all about using the resources that you have at that moment. Don't look out to wait to get more resources. Use what you have right now to build your tomorrow and discipline yourself to be able to follow the dreams and the chances and the opportunities that you have at the moment. Be very intentional to not the opportunities that are there. Oh, why? Right. Yes, because opportunities are there for young people, mm -hmm. but they pass by because people are not very intentional at, at noticing those opportunities. The moment you pass by an opportunity, that's gone. So Just you like need that. to be sober, Buddha. You need to be sober <laughs> to see these opportunities uh -huh. and invest, invest wisely 
and make decisions mm -hmm. that are more important to you have the courage to stand for what you want oh. not what other people want there is uh, yes. those are the final thoughts of Lilemuli amesema mkwerada be intentional in whatever that you're doing and make sure an opportunity doesn't pass you by so yes. uh, that's all we had time for uh, looking forward to doing this again yeah. if you have more time yes so make sure you follow us across all our social media platform that is at y254 channel at michelle ashira is where you can find me across all my social media platform barry will be coming up with another interview